Welcome to What's Growing at CMC, the weekly segment where I, Daniel, and I, Talasha, share with you about some of what God is up to at College Mennonite Church. Mom couldn't come. She's in class. You're lying, Dad. A couple weeks ago, we celebrated nine new members. Over the next month, we will be sharing some of their faith stories here on What's Growing. This week, we will hear from Stephen Priest, Michelle Thomas, and Ryan Brenneman. I see the work of the Holy Spirit happening at College Mennonite Church, the feeding and caring for people during COVID-19 pandemic, the compassion of members for those suffering loss of all description, health, hunger, homelessness, and despair. I see God at work in all ages of people, young people who collect offering and skipping down happily for children's time. Seasoned believers sharing time and talent with those new families coming into the church family of CMC every week. I recognize the positive parenting traits revealed by many mothers and fathers of the children at CMC. After three years of this observation, I want to become a part of that story as a member. The decision to follow Jesus in a walk of faith has been a series of decision points over 47 adult years. I read a book titled Nine O'Clock in the Morning by a pastor in Seattle, Washington. It spoke of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the wonders of a faith walk of action and resolve. Over the next 20 or so years, a lot of things happened in my life. Marriage, child rearing, career choices, and eventually a divorce. Without the Lord's presence in my life, the overwhelming concerns would have swallowed my existence. I clung to a belief that Jesus had my hand. When floodwaters of despair threatened me, he was holding me on his shoulders. Often over the course of my faith walk, I seemed to lose direction on the path. With loving care, the Lord has steered my course back to his love. Many times he used people or events as a search party for me. I was lost, not God. Our Lord is always constant, always forgiving, ready and willing to offer seven times 70 opportunities for a second chance. It was a do-over, as we kids used to call it in playing kickball or baseball when we couldn't get the decision right. One of my second chances happened 21 years ago with meeting and marriage to Donna. Donna's three children and grandchildren have been a blessing. Second chances have come in the nature of finding a lost career of teaching at Ivy Tech and more recently semi-retired substitute teaching. Friendships developed with many hardworking professionals in the field of education have also strengthened my purpose. The beginning of a new challenge to my faith walk occurred nearly three years ago. A diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia has brought a new urgency to my life. The health professionals across from the street from CMC have been my examples of God's holding my hand once again. When I consider who or what people influenced my faith, I thought of my grandfather who lived the model of Christ's life for his 65 years. Born with a heart defect, he would provide home and security for his daughters during the Great Depression. Granddaddy would pray for his children and grandchildren during the 50s and the 60s. He wouldn't live to see how we all turned out. I believe he still watches over us from his place at Jesus' side. Granddad once spoke, of a lay, spoke as a lay leader of our church of the importance of living for Jesus as being more difficult than dying with Jesus. That should be my faith testimony for my life. Growing up, church was a big part of both of our lives. My family was heavily involved in a town-line Mennonite uh, planted congregation in Dwajak, Michigan, where my grandfather and father were pastors. I was baptized and a member of North Wayne Mennonite Church. I also attended a fundamentalist Christian school throughout high school. Eastern Mennonite University was a great place to transition from my childhood to life in the real world. Since then, I've been looking for a church to challenge and accept me for both where my beliefs are and who I am as a person. My family were members at Walnut Hill Mennonite Church here in Goshen, and I was baptized there at age 18. 
I attended Bethany High School, and it is always so nice to see some of my old teachers when I walk in the doors at CMC. I also attended Eastern Mennonite University, where faith studies were part of my Justice, Peace, and Conflict Studies education. After meeting Ryan and getting married, we visited some churches but never really felt settled. With my parents, Everett and Barbara Thomas, attending here at CMC, we would visit for special services or sometimes attend with them. After services, we always left appreciating various aspects of the experience. When we moved back to Goshen a few years ago, we realized that we wanted our children to have a church community like we did both, like we both did growing up. There were a lot of things that attracted us to CMC, but the biggest single thing was the openness of differing ideas and cultures, while also being a firm and affirming congregation. We have appreciated some of the challenging messages, the acceptance of new things, and invitation to Sunday school classes where all beliefs are welcome. I also love the singing. It is very easy and comfortable these days to live in an echo chamber. In looking for a church, it was important to us that our children, Sam, who's 10, and Ian, who's six, learn that we can have different opinions, beliefs, or backgrounds from others and still love them. We are optimistic that these lessons will be available at this diverse and growing congregation. We look forward to being a part of this community and thank you for welcoming us. Stephen, Michelle, and Ryan, we are so glad to have your families here with us at CMC. We had a fantastic time last week at Take It Outside. People sang hymns in the sanctuary and weeded in the memorial garden. And we kids had fun playing on the playground while our parents reconnected with each other. Then at five o'clock, we gathered in the memorial garden for a laid back and invigorating time of singing and digging into scripture. It was fun to play charades, read scripture, and make music together. And some invigorating exploration of the week's parable happened in small groups. It felt relaxed and new, but also pretty normal, kind of like coming home to church. We hope lots of you will join us again today. Remember, come at four to reconnect in small groups and at five to make music and explore scripture. Speaking of connecting and Bible study, please get signed up for Compassion Camp. VBS has always been something that the church does for us kids. This year, it's really for all of us. People of every age are invited to come together to host our community and learn about being more compassionate. We parents need this to not just be something that our households come to. I am hoping that I get to know some more people in my church family. We kids really want to know people who are not the same age as our parents. We want to have relationships with you. So come join us July 17 and 18. Until next week, remember, God was, God is, and God will be. Thanks be to God. Planting and hoeing, there's something showing, popping up through the sod. The Spirit's blowing, new life we're knowing, giving and growing in the garden of God. and sowing, planting and hoeing, there's something showing, popping up through the sod. The Spirit's blowing, new life we're knowing, giving and growing in the garden of God.